Hello and welcome back to Meerkat Chris. So I'm a huge fan of the PlayStation 2 and because of this over the years I've amassed a pretty large PlayStation 2 collection that we're actually going to take a look at today. So yes, let's get started. So of course I got my assistant, Kathleen, to join me whilst we go through this collection of PlayStation 4 games. What else did I do? You sorted them out for me. In alphabetical order? Yes, so we're going to be going through them alphabetically, starting off with... Skipping straight past A, because I don't have any of them for some reason, Batman Begins. Haven't actually played this, but they obviously tried to do a trilogy of the Nolan film games before they opted to do Batman Arkham Asylum series, but you know. Beyond Good and Evil. I think I have the PS4 remaster of this as well. I think I got it for free or something, or really cheap. So if I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna play it on that, but it's just really good to have. I always remember seeing the artwork for this when I was young and it just looked like a really pretty game. And it's apparently really good, so. Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30. I was never a huge fan of this game back when it came out. I was more into the Medal of Honor and Call of Duty franchises. I think it's worth having, especially for like, what was it, like 50p or something. Oh, put them in a pile. I'll try not to knock them over this time, Kathleen. <laughs> burnout. The first Burnout in a black case, as opposed to the regular blue PAL cases. I played Burnout Paradise, but not really any of the others. Canis Canem Edit, also known as Bully. One of Rockstar's games. Really good game. Have you ever played it on the Wii? No. <laughs> I have it. I think I have. One of PS2's finest games. It's good. I know, I was just, that was quotation because oh. I was quoting. And now for the game that got me into the Call of Duty franchise all the way back in the early 2000s, Call of Duty Finest Hour. I actually love this game. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, as some cringy people might say, like me. <laughs> <laughs> the game that got me into Call of Duty. It basically took a lot of inspiration from the Enemy at the Gates film. And I remember all the Russian stuff sticking with me as a kid. Like, all of that opening was horrific, but in a really good educational way, of course. Anyway, <laughs> Call of Duty 2, Big Red 1. The thing I remember most about this one is that me and my brother used to pretend that one of the soldiers was my granddad. And we used to follow him and be like, oh, there's Grandad. Oh no, Grandad's dead. Because <laughs> he'd get shot. It was a weird phase we had. Call of Duty 3. Treyarch's first proper entry into the Call of Duty franchise. And uh, I really can't get through this game. I think it's so tedious. Anyway, Colin McRae Rally 2005. Colin McRae Rally on the PS1 was actually one of the very first games I ever had and me and my brother used to love playing the split screen mode in it and this one's a fun addition as well so yeah. Here we go. <laughs> and now for what may be my favourite game of all time, Conflict Desert Storm. Now if you've played this you're probably like, what? But yeah, I, I love this game. <laughs> it's like my favourite childhood experience to play with my brother on the PlayStation 2 with. We used to go back to this every single year and complete it from start to finish and I never get bored of this game, it's so good. And of course, we follow that up with Conflict Desert Storm 2, also known as Back to Bag... Bad... Baghdad? Is Baghdad. that a place? Yeah. It sounds like I'm just making it up. No, That's Baghdad. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure. In a lot of ways, this game's actually a lot better than the first one, especially when speaking technically. If you're going to go back to any of them, I'd probably say go back to Conflict Desert Storm 2 because it holds up a lot better in my opinion. It just doesn't hold as much of a special place in my heart as the first game. And then Conflict Vietnam. Bit of a funny story with this one because we got it on Christmas Day by my grandparents, but they put it in a Weetabix cereal box and sealed it and gave us it and we were like, like, oh, we a bix, yay. <laughs> And then they were like, oh, so you, you like your present, do you? And we were like, yeah. And they're like, oh, you're going to eat them, are you? Yeah, of course. We love we a bit. <laughs> when really inside, I was really upset. And then they actually told us to open them up. And oh, Conflict Vietnam, the third conflict game. And it's a pretty good one. It's a bit too um, bad language for my liking. But it's 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 fun. It continues on with the, the nice mechanics of the first two. It just loses some of its characteristics with losing the characters themselves. That's so funny. It's so mean but so <laughs> funny at the same time. Yeah, and then the last true conflict game was Conflict Global Storm. It wasn't really the last one. They released Denied Ops on the the seventh gen consoles, but oof, we don't talk about that game. No, this one's a lot of fun. It does some stuff in the story where me and my brother were like, no, no, but 
Yeah, um, we never completed this one, unfortunately. Completely unrelated to the conflict games we just talked about, Conflict Zone. This is more of like a, a, a strategy game. Puzzles. It's more of like an RTS game. It's what? Puzzles. Puzzles. Strategy. strategy. I don't know. Do you, you know said what? strategy game? Like a real time strategy game. So puzzle. Puzzle game. What's the strategy? Okay, game? it's a puzzle game, no. Kathleen. It's a puzzle game. Uh, top Chumps, Doctor Who. <laughs> what? It's literally just Top Chumps, but in digital form. I didn't even know you could get digital Top Chumps. Yeah, that's how much they were desperate to make a cash grab out of this. Dog's Life. A bit of a weird game, because you literally take control of a third person dog, and yeah, you just go around the town. As a dog. I, I think just, you look for your owner or something. I just love its face with no. Use the unique smell o vision mode to see the world through a dog's eyes. Wow. I got so close to finishing this game. Next up, Driver 3. I didn't pay £8 for it, don't worry. A bit of an infamous game because it's technically awful. Enter the Matrix. I used to enjoy this back when I played it as a kid, but I don't think it's a game you can really go back to that well. Next up, one of my favourite games of all time, Freedom Fighters. One of the more underrated games I've ever played, The Getaway. One of the more obvious GTA clones at the time. It's interesting because it does a photorealistic interpretation of London, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. I actually kind of admired the new entry in the series as well. And now of course we're on to Grand Theft Auto 3, the first 3D GTA game. Ah, I could never get into this one. I found the world to be a bit too bland and gray. Oh, also, I do like the unique cover art that you can get with this one and different to the other releases around the world as well. GTA Vice City, one of my favorite games of all time as well. Maybe my favorite GTA. I really do hope they revisit Vice City at some point in the future because it's a really nice characteristic place. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and GTA San Andreas again, the Platinum Edition. Yeah, one of the best games I've made in my opinion. Great open world with some really compelling characters and story elements and a funnish multiplayer mode as well. Gran Turismo 3, Platinum Edition. I'm not a huge fan of the Platinum series, it's just they look so cheap and I know what that's what they are, they are the cheaper versions but they look cheap and I don't like it. I just think they look really dull. I've been putting these upside down. <gasps> Only the last couple. You're allowed to start a new pile, you know, before that one tumbles. Oh. The Great Escape. I didn't expect much from this game, but I actually really enjoyed the first couple hours of it at the very least. I did not pay £40 <laughs> for it though. I did not pay £40. It's actually made by the same people who did the Conflict series, you know, one of my favourite games of all time. Gun. I haven't actually played this, but I've seen a lot of gameplay videos of it and it looks like a lot of fun. That wasn't meant to rhyme, but... You're so proud of That's yourself. That's not a, it's not exactly a crime. Half-Life. Yeah, I played quite a bit of this. I did end up not finishing it though, because I just ended up out of the flow of the game, but whoa. <laughs> the only Harry Potter game I have, for reasons I'll explain in a minute, Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup. I remember this was a game I really wanted as a kid as well, but then my mum was like, you don't want a Quidditch game? And we were like, yeah, we do. And then I got it and it's terrible. I think we had that. Yeah, so that's the only Harry Potter game I have at the moment because my brother the dude ended up taking all them for his Harry oh. Potter collection, which was fair, I guess, because I got some of the, the other games instead. Hitman Contracts. Yes. Oh, I actually didn't know I had two Hitman games. Uh, Hitman Blood Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Hitman Blood Money. <laughs> <laughs> Blood Mummy. <laughs> Yeah, Steelbook Edition, actually. It has a few scratches here and there, but, you know, it's Hitman, so why not? Please make a new pile. The Incredibles. This is a game I have not gone back to in a long time, but I've heard very much negative things about this recently. It makes me wonder what I was thinking when I was a kid, because I really loved this game. I didn't even know there was a game. <laughs> There's a level where you play as Dash, and you have to run to school. Like, you have to catch up with the bus or something. Quite so you run fun. through the streets as Dash. It's... it's it's fun. Um, I don't have the sequel anymore, but I used to have Rise of the Underminer, but I must have sold it at some point when I was a stupid little kid. Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb Raider. Oh my god. <laughs> I remember trying to play this one as well, but I found it a bit weird. Like, mechanically, I found it a bit weird. But you know, it's Indiana Jones on the PlayStation 2. Iron Man, the video game. I don't know why I chose to get this on the PS2 as opposed to like the current gen consoles. And I don't think it's meant to be that great of a game in general, but here it is nonetheless. 
Iron Man on the PS2. James Bond, 007, Agent of Fire. Not Under Agent, fire. Under Fire. <laughs> that was one of my favourites. I think I very nearly finished this game. I can't remember. It was years ago now. And then, of course, Nightfire. My favourite game. I'm pretty sure in our PS4 video, you said, my favourite game ever to GTA 5. And then I was like, really? Yeah, GTA 5 is. I know, but in this one, you've just done it to Nightfire. No, but then... but. But okay, let's go. It's my favorite PS2 game. Um, yeah, it's a good game. It has some great opening levels. I mainly mean for multiplayer. Everything or nothing might be my favorite PS2 era James Bond game. I just thought it was a really great addition to the James Bond series in general, including the films. And a lot of people, including me, like to see this as Piers Brosnan's official final outing because he did the voice work on it and everything, and it has a great villain with Willem Dafoe. Not as good as. <laughs> I, I disagree. From Russia with love. It's a bit more of a continuation of the style of everything or nothing and it has a really cool rendition of the From Russia with love uh, theme. And then a bit of an iffy game. Golden Eye. Rogue. What's it called? Rogue Agent? Rogue Agent. Why is it iffy? It's rubbish. Like this one I will agree is just, this is just bad. I did not enjoy trying to play through this when I was younger. You don't even play as Bond. I think you kill Bond off right at the beginning of the game or something. And it's totally unrelated to the GoldenEye game from the N64 era. It's just basically cash grabbing on the name of that game, which rhymed. <laughs> it's not rhyming. <laughs> okay. It is a crime. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I actually forgot I had this one. 007 Quantum of Solace. Yeah, Quantum of Solace is a video game. It's actually kind of interesting to me because on the Wii, that was actually the very first James Bond game that I ever played and I actually really liked the, that game. So much so that I've actually completed it a lot of times across that the Xbox 360 and PS3 and, and now I have it on the PS2. This one in particular is a bit more intriguing because this is a completely different game pretty much. It's a third person game as opposed to a first person shooter. So wow. yeah. The other one's a third person ones. Quantum of Solace. No. Oh, you do It doesn't matter. Jurassic Park. Operation Genesis. Yay! Yeah. I love this game. And who bought you it? <laughs> well, you bought me this copy, yes. Thank you, Kathleen. That sounded so insincere. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it doesn't come with an instruction manual, which is really irritating because this game is so hard to get cheap. Oh my god, we found it for five pounds? That's insane. I was gonna say, you can't find this. I was thinking six, but... You cannot cheaper. find this game cheap anywhere now. Just cause. I got this because I couldn't afford Just Cause 2 at the time, and this one isn't... Ugh, it just doesn't have the same charm in my opinion. It lacks a lot of the good features of the series. I guess it's fun to go back and have a look, see what it started like. Kill Zone. Yeah. Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. Limited collector's edition, steelbook. It's actually really dented though. <laughs> it's got a really bad dent down here. Mm. It's a bit of an odd steelbook. It doesn't feel like a steelbook. It's like really plasticky, I think. Oh no, if I was gonna have King Kong as a video game, why not get the steelbook? Ooh, Lego Star Wars, the video game. The Lego game that started off this whole Lego movies games and such. One of my favorite games on the PS2 actually. And I wanted to get this edition again as opposed to the collection of them because this features Dexter's Diner. What? Oh, right, okay. What? The, d the diner in what? The first one? What? <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> you want to play it? I don't know. The prequel trilogy. Oh no. Have you even played Lego Star Wars? No. <laughs> Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy. A really solid follow up to the previous game. I just think it lacks something for me compared to the prequel trilogy. I don't know what it is though. I think it just lacks a bit of colour. But you know, good game. The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Haven't played it. Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Unrelated to the last game, actually, if you didn't know. Made by completely different developers, so they don't really consist as part of the same continuity. Because this one follows the film, whereas that follows the books. It's like going from Medal of Honor to Call of Duty. Like two different games that just happen to be about the same thing. Mafia. Uh, the first Mafia game, haha. <laughs> um, as opposed to Mafia 2 and 3. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Rockstar's Manhunt. Haven't actually played this. I'm a bit too scared to play it because it seems a bit too graphic in terms of bad language. I mean, in terms Why of bad language. Why are you scared language. of bad language? I don't know. You know when you play it on the TV and then they start going, oh, you mother, oh, oh, F you, you know? And you're like, 
Oof. Could you just be a bit more quiet, please? <laughs> like, while you're playing it loud on a TV, it's just a bit awkward. But... When you said it's too graphic, I thought you meant, like, really, like, Oh, no, it is, it, it is really bloody. gory. It's actually so gory and bad that it's been banned in a lot of places, and I think the sequel was actually banned in a lot of places as well because it's so graphic. But no, I meant in terms of bad language. I'm just scared of language. Max Payne. Another Rockstar game. I really like Max Payne 3. I haven't played this one yet, but I've seen a lot about it and it looks like a lot of fun and it has a really cool noirish look to it, so. Metal Vonner Frontline. I love it. Still to this day, I love it. Um, I have the PS3 remaster of it with the Metal of Honor 2010 reboot. And this was before any of the Call of Duty games came into my life with Finest Hour. Basically opens as Saving Private Ryan's D-Day mission and it's so good. It's so one of the best first person shooters I've ever played actually. Following that up with, we do have Medal of Honor Rising Sun. A bit of a disappointing game even when it came out. I remember feeling like this game just lacked a lot of the charm of the of Frontline. And that's because it's made by completely different people I think. It's just a bit clunky. And I mean it does have a split screen mode to play through the campaign which is always a great thing but I just wish it was as good as Frontline. And then Medal of Honor European Assault. I haven't really played much of this one. I'd kind of lost interest with Medal of Honor by this point. Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Oh, <laughs> what a fancy case. <laughs> it comes with two discs, it's got the manual, and it's just beautiful. I love it. Midnight Club 3, D-U-B edition, or dub edition, I guess. Another Rockstar game. I was never a huge fan of it. I, I just found it a bit wavy, as in, like, controlling the car just felt a bit too wavy for my liking. Mission Impossible, Operation Sumo. So, so much. <laughs> so more. Reminds me a lot of the Splinter Cell games, which I think it was obviously ripping off in terms of mechanics. It's nothing special. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. And you know what would be really handy? If I actually had the game. Oh, that's that one, isn't it? Yeah, I got this at a charity shop a few years ago for like two pound and they didn't have the game with it. Yeah, it was a charity shop, so you can't exactly go back and be like, hey, can I have my money back, please? Because you didn't give me my game. I mean, you probably can, but <laughs> it's a charity shop. <laughs> Technically, that should not be in there because you don't have the game. I guess. <laughs> Need for Speed Underground. Need for Speed Underground 2, which is actually the Need for Speed game that got me into the series. I even bought a racing wheel for it <laughs> that could work with the console. It was great. I actually went back to this a few years ago and it, I think it holds up as well. I think the graphics are actually pretty good for a PlayStation 2 game. Need for Speed Carbon. Uh, you'll notice we missed out Most Wanted and that's because I lent it to a friend who never gave me it back. And it's really expensive to get a hold of these days. So ugh. anyway, here's Carbon. It's fun. I guess. It has a mechanic where you can drive off a cliff and mm. crash and, you know, Burn. fail. Burn. Mm. Need for Speed Pro Street. This was the first game in the series where I was a bit like, oh, are we doing this now? I know Need for Speed can do what it likes, but this isn't Need for Speed for me. Apart from the Nevada track. <laughs> that was amazing to play on. Need for Speed Undercover. The last Need for Speed I played for a while because I don't know if it just felt a bit too samey at the time or if I just lost interest. I don't know. No One Lives Forever. The Operative. I got this recently so I haven't actually played it but it just has a lot of vibes of the James Bond games. Prince of Persia Trilogy. It includes three games. I'm not a huge fan of this because I, I don't like bulky collection packs just clearly state, oh, we include three games, you know, without it being really nicely designed or whatnot. I love the games themselves, though. The Sands of Time, the first Prince of Persia of this era, was brilliant to play back when it came out. I just need to get them individually. PSYOPs. The Mind Gate Conspiracy. Wow. Another one of my favourite games of all time. And another one that is highly underrated. A lot of people don't seem to know about this or talk about it, if that's the case. But it's so fun. It has some really cool mechanics, especially unique for the time. It allows you as the player to be in control of, like, telekinesis or mind control or all those sort of fun stuff. Whilst being a third-person shooter and narrative game, it's so much fun. It's a really great sci-fi game, in my opinion. And it's so great to me that I actually did my own remake posters as if it was going to be a film adaptation back in college a few years ago. So yeah, there's that. The Punisher. Haven't played it, but you know, it's fun to have some Marvel games amongst your collection. And the death animations seem amazing, <laughs> like the kill animations. They sound crazy. Ooh, Ratchet and Clank. 
I remember having the demo disc for the PlayStation 2 because it came with my PlayStation 2 and Ratchet and Clank was among the playable demos there and I always used to play it over and over and over again and it wasn't until the last five years where I actually went back and actually bought the game itself. Uh, yeah, so I have a lot of fond memories with this game even though I might not necessarily have played this one in particular. Ratchet and Clank 3. You might notice that these aren't the correct titles if you come from overseas or whatever. For some reason in the UK they dropped all those titles. I don't have number two because it's a pretty expensive to get a hold of these days. This is the one I actually had as a kid, Rayman 3. This was actually the very first game I got on the PS2, along with another one that I'm going to mention. This is a rectangular edition. I think that's how you pronounce that. So it has a bit of a 3D effect, you know, because it's actually just an extra card. Oh, fancy. Red Dead Revolver. The first Red Dead Redemption game. Red Faction 2. Haven't played it. Reservoir Dogs. Uh, you know, that Quentin Tarantino film? That is a game for some reason on the PlayStation 2 in 2006. It's like 15 years after the film came out, they thought, why not? Let's make that Quentin Tarantino film into a game for, for the kids. <laughs> it's not for kids. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Scrabble Interactive. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Seek and destroy. It's where you play as tanks and you battle other tanks and you level up with new tanks to battle more varied tanks. And there's a multiplayer mode to it, so it's pretty fun. You know what you should have played? What? Road Trip Adventure. Okay, sorry Kathleen. It's where you play as cars and you go like oh. driving around and explore new places. I think that's a bit different to playing as a tank and battling each other to death. Shell shock. Nam. 67. I don't know what that even means. Vietnam? Oh, right. I'm an idiot. Because <laughs> they're trying to be cool and hip. Well, then it just sounds like they're going <laughs> mild. I don't think they're trying to appeal to you, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> the Simpsons Hit and Run. Shame it's in a platinum edition. I obviously have to buy it again in the regular case, but this is the one I got obviously. as a... <laughs> But this is the one I got as a kid. And for a lot of people, not myself included, this was their first GTA because they couldn't have GTA as a kid because their parents wouldn't let them. But me, oh no, my mum just let me have it for some reason. GTA. I was allowed to play that. But I wasn't allowed to play GTA. No, I, I was playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City and San yes, Andreas when this came out. The Simpsons game. Uh, the last true Simpsons game. Haha. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah, that's the case. You don't have Road Rage? I did, but I hated it, so I sold it like ages ago. I just did not like it. I like that game. Yeah, but no, I just I didn't like that gameplay at all. Anyway, Can Simpsons game. This is basically the Simpsons doing what they were doing before, where they just basically take pre-existing franchises such as GTA or Tony Hawk's or Crazy Taxi and making a game out of it, but making a game where they just basically have a collection of mini games that are all just rip-offs of other games like Medal of Honor and such. But I enjoyed it. And speaking of Simpsons, we have The Sims. I got this copy for 59p actually. But interestingly, this was actually the first Sims game I ever played because it was one of the very few games my mum actually went out and bought herself. I think she'd heard about it previously and how good it is, but um, yeah, she gave up after doing the character creation for whatever reason, but me and my brother actually took over and ended up becoming obsessed with the series from there on. That was the first Sims game that I played as well. Yeah. Uh, the Sims 2. I still love this game. It has a really great addition of multiplayer, where you can play local multiplayer with your friend, if you have any. Yeah, you can just basically live out your lives with each other in a house that you've made. The Sims 2 Pets. I don't know. It's a bit more like the PC Sims, but of course with just all the downgrades of the console limitations, without all the stuff that actually makes the PS2 Sims good, as in like the story mode and such. So it just makes it a bit boring to play. And then of course, we go back to the Sims busting out. I used to love this one as well. Uh, it had a bit more of a crazy and fun appeal to it, and it, it was just a bit more energetic in terms of what it was going for. I just love how the PS2 Sims games give you this sense of progression that you don't get from the PC ones. The Herbs, Sims in the City. Basically, the Sims being a bit more experimental, so much so that they actually have the Black Eyed Peas in this, not only in terms of their songs, but their characters as well. And it was actually kind of fun because it's more about being social with other characters as much as I hate that in real life. And actually doing your jobs. Like you actually get to do the jobs. As opposed to, you know, like being more about the, the, the making the house and such. It's not so much about that. You also hate jobs in real life. <laughs> yeah. Sock em. Soak em. Uh, the first one, US Navy SEALs, and then of course, Suck'em, Soak'em 3, US Navy SEALs. I don't have the second one, but I'll probably get it at some point. These were like 25p or something ridiculously cheap. 
There Ooh. we go. And now, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, the Angel of Darkness. I actually haven't played this one because all I hear is negative things about it. And from what I can see, yeah, I can see why. But I'll get around to it at some point because, you know. <laughs> will, of course, get around to it because it's Lara. <laughs> Lara Croft Tomb Raider. Anniversary. Collector's edition. I've got two of them. Haha. <laughs> One in sealed condition, but I also have an edition that I can actually open and have a look at. It's actually in really good condition considering second hand and whatnot. Yeah, a really good game as well. I really like these Lara Croft uh legend games. Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. This is a bit of a hit and miss game. It's probably the best one on the PS2 though. Uh, I did have the Terminator or whatever it was called for the PS2, but I sold it because it was just so bad. But this one's actually pretty good for the most part because it does spend quite a bit of the missions in the future with all the machines and such. And you play as Arnold Schwarzenegger's T-800 robot. So who doesn't want to be doing that in a video game? It just falls down a bit when it goes to the Terminator 3 movie stuff in the present day. And it gets a bit boring there, I think. It's just cool to like smash up some machines. The Suffering. Haven't played it yet, but Chris Knockwood, who watches these videos, recommended in one of their videos, and it was pretty cheap, so why not? Stuntman. Another interesting game, because this is also one of the playable demos on that demo disc I talked about with Ratchet and Clank. And I used to play this one a lot as well as that one. And it's a great game. I don't know why there aren't more of these out there. Because you basically play as a stuntman and you do all the crazy stunt stuff in movies. You'll have to like hit certain barrels at a certain time. And then you can replay it so it looks like a film with your car going through and you'll like have all the mistakes that you made or didn't make. I used to want to be a stuntman. Well, you should have played... You should have... You should Stunt man, Kathleen. <laughs> yeah, she was, it was a stunt man. <laughs> We're not too far off now. Probably about 30 more games to go. Star Wars Battlefront. The original Battlefront and one of my favourite games of all time. Probably in my top 10 actually. It's just one of those games that you love to go back to with a friend or so. It just has so many classic maps in it. You were actually right. I think it was about 28, 29 games. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it was Including just a complete that one, guess. I think it's about 29, 30. Oh, wow. And then, of course, we follow that up with Star Wars Battlefront 2. A bit of an interesting story with this one, because for some reason, we got it a bit early. I just remember it was supposed to come out in a few days' time, but my brother actually came home with it. How? I don't know, he said he just walked into the shop and they just had it out. It was like oh, nearly a week before it came out or something stupid. And I think we all like this game, so I don't have to talk about that too much. I don't. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm joking. Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Now this is a bit of an ironic story because <laughs> this is the game that I bought for the Wii originally by trading in about 50 PS2 games to get the money to pay for that Wii game when it came out. Yeah, so I lost out on tons of my PS2 collection to get this when it came out on the Nintendo Wii of all consoles, only to end up selling that in the future for not that much and then buy this again for really, really, really cheap on the PS2. Stupid. Child. Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. Another fun one to play with you with my brother, I mean, I don't remember the single player missions as much, but I do remember having fun with them. But the main appeal was the combat between characters where you could each choose a character and just basically do like a Mortal Kombat sort of scenario. Star Wars Jedi Starfighter. No, Starfighter, that's a different game. Forget about that. I think I bought this because I did play it when I was younger. Like, I think I borrowed it off a friend, but I don't think I enjoyed it that much. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Spider-Man. The movie adaptation game. This was actually the game I got along with Rayman 3 as my first two mm. PlayStation 2 games. And I remember loading this up for the very first time and I heard my grandma go, oh, it looks like real life. <laughs> and I was like, it does. And then throughout that entire day, I was just saying to my grandma, it looks like real life, doesn't it, grandma? How old were you? Uh, well, this is 2002, so it must have been Christmas of 2002. I enjoy it. It does lack a lot of the great stuff about Spider-Man games, such as like the free roam city and the fact that spider webs should attach to buildings as opposed to the sky and clouds. This game does fall victim to that, but I enjoy it for the most part. Yeah, you were six. Okay, thanks Kathleen. Spider-Man 2, the Spider-Man game nobody can stop talking about. And one of my favorite games as a kid. I enjoy playing this a lot, even though when you go back to it, it is a bit repetitive, but it is a lot of fun. And stuff like this makes me so excited to play the PS4 Spider-Man coming out later this year. Oh, Help me, I've lost my balloon. What? 
God. <laughs> uh, Spider-Man 3. Even as a kid, I, I did not enjoy this game for whatever reason. The game itself was just really buggy and it was just a mess for some reason. Oh dear, we've been recording for an hour and two minutes. We've only got... About 20 left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. The very first Splinter Cell game. About a year ago or so, I did a throwback review for it, and I still love it. I think it's a great game. Um, yeah. You were not doing a PS2 update video for a long time. Okay, sorry, Kathleen. <laughs> Just take it all day. It is the biggest collection video I've ever made, so. <laughs> Splinter Cell. Pandora Tomorrow. Pandora tomorrow. <laughs> I think this video is sending me insane. I know, I was just gonna say. <laughs> my throat hurts. <laughs> I think it's You're really straining my voice. But... Yes, please. Pandora tomorrow. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> okay. I can't get into it as much as the first one. I think it's a bit too streamlined and a bit too leading your hand as opposed to the first one, but it's still an enjoyable game if you haven't played it. I played one of them. Well, I watched my brother play one of them. <laughs> so you didn't play no, it? No, <laughs> but I felt like I played it because I used to sit and watch it. Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Often considered the best Splinter Cell game. This one opened up the local multiplayer aspect for people. And it's always fun to go back with a friend with. And yeah, why not go do that yourself? Go on. Don't tell people what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm just losing. I just want this video to be over. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Double Agent. The last Splinter Cell game I played, no, it isn't. What am I even. I, I don't mean, I'm not even thinking. Splinter Cell Double Agent. A PS2 game. There is a black man in the background. Wow! A black man in the background? <laughs> no. What did you say? Black what? and white background. Oh, right. Uh, this one tried to be a bit different by giving a bit more of a morality system or something like that. Something where you have to like choose your fate or decide things for yourself. I haven't played it in a while. I think it is, unfortunately, just a bit more of a forgettable Splinter Cell game though. I think the covers quite memorable. Oh yeah, no, I, I actually remember seeing that one around at HMVs. Like the poster for that, I remember that when it was coming out. I always remember that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> SSX. A snowboarding game, I think. I haven't played it. I don't know, if I ever have a friend, <laughs> I might play it with them. <laughs> yeah, you could play it with me. Yay. <laughs> I'm not helping you anymore. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Star Wars Racer Revenge. I've never actually played the original Racer game. Um, should that not have been in the Star Wars section? <laughs> should have <been>. You. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> so should have the next game. <laughs> I didn't realize these were Star Wars games. When I was anyway, <laughs> this video's a mess. I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway, it's not a great game by any means. And then <laughs> Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Not really to the TV show. This actually happened ages before that. This was back in 2002. Everything's 2002. I know it is, isn't it? It's weird. I remember buying this and being a bit excited to play it, but I just found it a bit boring. I think the main draw of it is the vehicle sections, but even then the maps are so bland, I think. Oh, <laughs> why is this? I don't know. How have you messed this up so much? I didn't realize this was funny <laughs> Star Wars Bounty Hunter. I just loved the bounty hunter aspect about it and the underworld aspect as well. It's different to the other Star Wars games in that you play as Jango Fett. Yeah, you get his jetpack and all of his abilities without really encountering any lightsaber stuff. It's very much its own thing in the Star Wars universe. TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I haven't played it, but I don't exactly expect much from it. And as Raider Knight explained in the comments, it's just, it's not good. So yeah, they're the... Who doesn't want TMNT on a game though, so? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. I was never a huge fan of the Pro Skater series as much as everybody else seems to prefer it to the other games I'm gonna mention. I think they're good. I just yeah, prefer. I think they're good. I just think they, they're a bit bland in comparison to the more fun versions that yeah. I'm gonna show in a minute. I guess it's just taste differences. But when people talk about Tony Hawk's, they talk about the Pro Skater games. And I, I wanna talk about the next games. Well, you do that, Chris. I sound crazy. <laughs> Tony Hawk's Underground. This was the Tony Hawk's game that got me into the Tony Hawk's franchise and I still enjoy it. Tony Hawk's Underground 2 and of course my favourite. Uh, uh, and of mine. 
Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. I just think this has everything that I liked about the Tony Hawk series in mm -hmm. one game, but also has a much brighter and more appealing art style to it. And it just comes across as way more fun and intriguing to me. I like that one the best as well. And I actually remember trying to get through the story campaign as much as possible with this one, more so than any of the others. One hour and 13 minutes in. Sound like Big Brother now. <laughs> Tony Hawk's Project 8. This was the Tony Hawk's game that just made me so bored with the franchise. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it lost exactly, but it just lost even, a lot of its characteristics. Even like the back compared to that back. <laughs> I think they did a lot of what, at the time, a lot of games and movies tried to do, where they tried to just make it a bit more simpler. I only played that, like, once, didn't really. I think I only it. played this one at once, actually. And I um, don't think I ever played this one because of I didn't the last play this. One. I didn't play any past that point. Proving Ground. I bought it because it was cheap and, I don't know, last five games. Trivia Pursuit. <laughs> Yay. True Crime, New York City. I haven't played them too, so I haven't really got anything to say. Wipeout Fusion. I've got the Wipeout Omega collection on the PS4, mainly because everybody used to talk about the series as if it was this really held up high regarding thing. I guess it is because of what it did on the PS1 as such, but I just, I don't know, I just find it boring. I try to like these games, but I just don't, I don't know, maybe it's just the futuristic appeal to them. I don't know, maybe I like my race as a bit more grounded in reality with like wheels, I guess. I don't know. Okay. I, I also really am not a fan of the soundtrack to it, so maybe it's just not for me. What is it, like rap? <clears throat> no, it's like really electronic. I don't mm. know, like dubstep -y, I don't know. 13? Or X111? It has a really cool art style to it, and I've never actually played it, but I always wanted to because it looks like a really fun game, so... Maybe in the future. And last, but not least. Well, actually, maybe it is least because it's not a very good game, but... X-Men 3. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, X-Men, the, the official game. Yeah, X yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh. Wow! Okay, well, I think that's it. I don't know how many games there are here, but it seems like there's over a hundred, so... I'm really happy that that's my biggest collection, and it's one that's gonna keep growing, I think, because I just love the PS2 games. Maybe we should finish up the video and go get something to drink and... I rest my voice. Back to you, Chris. So yes, that is the end of our video. Yeah, why not leave a like and subscribe? Because it really helps out the channel and makes me feel good about the video in general. And whilst you're at it, why not go back and check out our PlayStation 4 collection video? And hopefully, I can see you over there. Goodbye. <laughs>